there friends. Welcome to another episode of Mark Orville Art Painting Tutorial. And in this video segment, um, what I want to kind of discuss uh, is how I want to add a few new elements to this painting. Now this painting I'm creating a video tutorial, a separate tutorial video um, on me just putting this painting together uh, in general, but I wanted to kind of branch off for a second and do a separate video on how I would go about uh, adding a couple new elements to this painting that I want to add. Um, specifically, what I've had in my mind is this vision of doing um, a desert highway uh, kind of down Route 66. And I wanted to do this Route 66 kind of concept for a while. And in my mind, um, as I've started kind of constructing this painting, um, I wanted to add this kind of fun, uh, bright and colorful um, gas station or, or general store. And in the front of this, I've kind of envisioned having some old gas pumps, maybe a big bright lamp shining down here, kind of brightening up the center and having uh, one of those old 1960s kind of Corvettes um, that is kind of just parked right here in front of these gas pumps. And as I've been kind of doing my research and some reference material, I've come across just a few um, things that I, I kind of want to use. Uh, I want to use this, this photo uh, in my painting um, for the Corvette, and I really like the red color, so I may even go with the red. Um, I've also got a couple more reference photos here. Here's uh, a Corvette in front of the gas pumps. Um, I've got a couple reference photos of the old um, uh, general store uh, concept that I wanted to use, so I kind of have a couple things that I want to do here. This is a reference photo of the gravel. I'm going to have some gravel. I've already kind of started here. I stippled it on. And I'll have some shrubbery, um, maybe some old cactus as well. So I've got a couple reference photos that I'm referring to. Um, and then uh, these gas pumps here. So I kind of want to take these gas pumps. I like the angle of these gas pumps, and they're nice old gas pumps. And I want to incorporate those kind of not really in the center of the painting, but just kind of offset right here to the right. And then I want to go ahead and I want to put my my little Corvette in front of that. Now the reason I want to, I tell you about this um, is I'm kind of creating this composite of of different elements that I want to put into uh, the painting. Now I did have one request. I had a request um, recently that came through my YouTube channel and uh, this is actually pertaining to the painting of the Hogwarts castle that I that I did. Um, this uh, question here comes from uh, Vlad Delka. I hope I pronounced that correctly, but Vlad, he says, hello, I'm 13 and uh, trying to paint this masterpiece. Can you post a tutorial with how to draw the outline of the castle? Thank you so much. And um, I've had similar requests before about how I like to draw in um, my subject matter prior to painting it. And I think this is kind of a really great way that I can answer Vlad's question because um, though I'm not necessarily demonstrating how I outlined or drew in my castle for that particular painting, and if you, and if you haven't seen that painting, uh, please check out the YouTube uh, video on the Hogwarts castle that, that I did. Um, however, the same concepts are going to apply on how I hand drew in that castle and how I'm planning to hand draw in my, my gas pumps and my car as well. And so in this video, and, and hopefully this will also address Vlad's question, I've had similar questions about, about drawing. And so I want to just focus on how I would incorporate my gas pumps, my lamp, that's shining down and my cool little red Corvette that I want to put 
probably kind of in, in this area, kind of offset a little bit from the center, but in front of my building and maybe even kind of overlapping the building slightly so that it really helps to push this, this building back. So that's what we're going to cover in this segment. We'll kind of talk through it. And um, I appreciate Vlad's comments and question about that. So uh, without further ado, let's get started. Um, I've got ahead and just kind of thrown in a scratch sheet of paper here on top of our painting. Um, and, you know, I, I would just, again, kind of disclaimer that uh, I, I've never really um, been in, in what you would call formal education with, with art. Everything that I have learned, it's been trial and error and mostly just all self-taught. Um, now, having said that, um, I will kind of share with you at least what I know about, about sketching. Everything starts with a sketch. And, and you know, um, again, you really want to think a lot about your angles. You want to think about negative space, which is the space between uh, an object, right? And the object being the subject. So for example, if I wanted to use this photograph that we have, that I've uh, downloaded here, and this photograph, you know, I really like the car, I like the, the two gas pumps, I think that would make an excellent um, subject to go right here into my painting. And so really I'm gonna look at, obviously the, the size of the, of the object in comparison to everything else where it where it falls uh, in the value system is it is it closer up toward the forefront is it more distant obviously this is going to be uh, in the foreground so it's going to be a little larger um, and you know we're going to probably want to put it in front of, of the store a little bit just to allow it to have some good composition and really start pushing things back into the distance but for the most part if I'm going to draw this I just do it freehand, but I'm looking, again, I'm looking at all my angles, and uh, I hope I'm getting this on the, on the camera here, but uh, I'm gonna look at my angles. Let me turn this around, there we go. So I'm gonna look at my angles, uh, look at the shapes, look at the, the negative space, which again is the area between an object, look at the distance, that'll help me with creating the right shape and the right distance. And so for the most part, if I'm gonna to start to freehand this, uh, as I said, I'm gonna have some sort of a lamp here in the back. And this is gonna be a really rough sketch because I just want to kind of just get the basic concept and the basic construction of these three objects. The, the lamp with the light shining down, the two gas pumps and the car. Those are the three things that I want to put in my composition here. And so I'm going to have this lamp and uh, you know there may be like a sign on that lamp and I'll have this little, I'll have a couple of lights and those lights will be kind of shining down for the most part. Then my objects, so I'm going to have um, probably Probably just slightly, maybe, well actually it could probably be right in the middle. I may have, you know, one of my gas pumps here. I'll have another gas pump here. And, and I'm looking at negative space here. I've got, you know, a, a pretty good distance here. I'd say I have almost two gas pump lengths between. So if I have one here, um, this would be another one, this would be a third one, therefore my distance more or less on the next pump is going to be kind of positioned right there. Right, so you know the lamp obviously is going to be a lot taller. We're going to have our pumps here. You know, I'm going to kind of freehand this as I go here, but uh, we're going to have kind of the side of that pump. And then we're gonna have our car, right? So the car, more or less, I wanna have kind of in front. I'm 
and uh, all right. We'll have another kind of tire well here. This will be a convertible. So kind of come up like that, up and kind of in front. And, uh, you know, right now for me, this concept This is really helping me to kind of just figure out exactly what I want it to kind of look like. And then everything else can kind of come a little bit later. So again, I just freehand these things. There's not some big science behind what I do. For the most part, I want to have my concept sort of laid out because now I can envision this as I'm going to transfer this to my to my board and I'm gonna I'm gonna freehand this on my board but at least I kind of have a direction and an idea about how I want this to look right so part of this pump will be kind of hanging down it'll be maybe a bit on a pedestal or some sort of concrete block and and so now I know that as I bring this into the painting I'm likely gonna bring it a little bit more kind of over like this, so it's not directly in the center. This is, in, in my opinion, just gonna be good. Um, a good composition where, you know, I don't really want the object right in the middle of the painting, but just maybe just slightly offset. And I wanna have it slightly in front of our, our convenience store here. And that'll help push the convenience store back a little bit. Have a nice shining lamp. We're gonna brighten up our gravel here and in, in those lit up sections. But this is really kind of how I do it, um, more or less. And again, as I'm kind of constructing something like my reference photo on what I want to use here, um, as I draw the basic shape out, I'm looking at my negative space. I'm looking at the distance from this point to this point between the gas pumps. And from, let's say, the tire to you know, to the top of the car, um, and, the, and where the top of the car is in comparison to the top of the gas pump. And I can use those negative space, I can kind of um, visualize them, I can measure them out, and I can kind of know where everything kind of belongs. And if I'm using that negative space, for example, the windshield, it starts to curve and angle right here. What is the distance between that that windshield, just the, the corner of it here, to the gas pump. And um, as, I, as I usually, as I use that type of reference, I can really start to kind of sketch this thing out. But again, for me, this is going to be just an outline. I'm just going to outline it. I'm not going to put a lot of detail because I'm going to paint right over it. And so really right now it's about, okay, well, how am I going to at least put these elements together? Where are they in relationship to each other? Where are they going to be fitting into the entire scheme of the painting, right? And that's kind of why I, I laid all this out the way I did early on and got most of everything kind of already plugged in here so that I can put things in the foreground and not have to paint around them, right? Because it's already painted in. Um, but for the most part, I kind of now know this is going to be my composition with those three items. I know where I kind of want to put it now. And from that point on, it's going to be about making it the right shape and size, right? Because now this is going to be in front of our store. It's going to be kind of offset, but in kind of in front. And it's going to be closer up to the foreground. Therefore, it's, it's going to be implied that it's going to be a little larger uh, in comparison to these things so that it, it all just jives well and it's all in the correct plane. It's all in the correct value. And um, it'll, it'll make everything look a lot more realistic. You know, for example, with the mountains that are here in the background, right? These are way off in the distance. And 
um, therefore, because I've used my value system, I've lightened my colors back here. As I've started to work toward the foreground, things have gotten darker, like the cactus. Right, so I'm going to turn this a little bit. You see, my cactus are a lot darker than, than the mountains in the background, right? I'm using cooler, bluer uh, colors, um, blue tone, gray tone colors in the background. As I move forward, it gets darker. I'm using a dark kind of purple, brown, blackish color here for my cactus to make it much darker, almost like a black or close to a black color because it is closer in the foreground. As things move closer, they get they get warmer, they get richer, they get darker and bolder. As I'm receding, they're gonna get cooler, naturally cooler and smaller. And that's how you create that illusion. And I gotta think about that when I'm putting in my, my, my two drawings. So with that, um, I'm gonna move this camera back. So with that, um, I hope that sort of addresses how I did the Hogwarts painting where, you know, I just outlined my sketch and it was, there's no magic formula. There's no, um, you know, detail. I'm just doing this, um, really freehanding it and I'm just outlining it in no detail because I'm going to be painting over it. And I'm really looking at negative space. I'm really looking at my angles and where they are in relationship to uh, other objects, you know, so that I can make sure that I've got the right shapes, the right sizes, and they're kind of, they're configured appropriately, right? And, and, and they're on the right value system. So those are my words of advice. I hope that was helpful. I appreciate the comments, but that's really how I usually draw. It's all done by freehand. And, and so um, I appreciate you tuning in. I hope that was somewhat helpful for, for some of you uh, newer uh, to um, to sketching um, but thank you so much for tuning in please subscribe to my youtube channel and uh, with that um, please uh, make sure to tune in uh, and check out the entire tutorial video of me putting this painting together um, my uh, route 66 um, desert painting i suppose so anyway thanks so much and have a great one bye